into some other stories now. These two nations were said to be sworn enemies in the past under different regimes. But today they appear to be setting some global standards of camaraderie. Now for the first time in their history, Israel and Germany are holding joint exercises of the Israeli Air Force and of the team Luftwaffe. Remembering the past but moving ahead with the future, this is what Israel says that it is doing more than 75 years after the end of the Nazi-orchestrated Holocaust. On the 17th of August, Israel and Germany created history together. The Israeli Air Force, led by Major General Amikam, entered into German airspace for the very first time ever. Now, he and his team of flyers were welcomed by the Luftwaffe Commander Lieutenant General Ingo Gerhards. The pilots from Germany have travelled to Israel for joint manoeuvres before, but this is the first time since the end of the Second World War that the Israeli Air Force is in German airspace, although Israel as a nation came into existence subsequent to the end of the Second World War. The initiative began with the historic flyby above the Feustenfeld Bruck Air Base and the former concentration camp at Dachau. The six Israeli Air Force F-16 fighter jets landed in Germany's Novenich Air Base and carried out Blue Wings exercises with Germany's Norwich and the Balk squadrons. Diese Übung Blue Wings hier am Anfang hat sehr große Emotionen. Die Bedeutung ist uns sehr wohl bewusst und wir sind stolz als Norwich, als Geschwader Bölke, die Gastgeber zu sein beim erstmaligen Besuch unserer österreichischen Partner in Deutschland. Und wir sind besonders stolz darauf, mit ihnen Seite an Seite zum ersten Mal gemeinsam über Deutschland fliegen zu dürfen. So the joint exercise goes beyond symbolism for both nations and the mission began on the 17th of August and will go on until the 28th of August. The pilots of both the countries are already practicing in what is being described as an unfamiliar environment where they are carrying out simulated dogfights, air to ground battles and missile threats. The pilots will also be taking part in aerial maneuvers, mid-air refueling and mock air battles using six F-16s, two Gulfstream G-55 and two Boeing 707 aircrafts, with other NATO members also being present in the mission. But the uh, flying here is, is a different feeling. I mean, uh, flying here, I remember in the past, but looking at the future, uh, I think uh, all of us feeling it uh, right uh, in the heart. Uh, how deep is the is the past? But we are, we are looking at the future. With, uh, 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 we are happy uh, for the, uh, the option to to fly together and the cooperation. I think it's the cooperation between their forces is good for the both uh, uh, counties. Now, in the month of May, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had come forth and he had stated that he was committed to annexing parts of the West Bank. He'd made this as a campaign promise. However, the July 2020 annexation plan was pushed back. Instead, what was signed was a kind of a normalization of diplomatic relations between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. The move may have shifted paradigms when it comes to the geopolitics of West Asia, but this is what has happened. It has isolated Netanyahu's most loyal and right-wing supporters.